Don't strip it. That's the key. This is the open end. That's the box end. That's the combination wrench. This is okay. Which so, one use? Use the box end. The box. Is that more support? Plus it fits this in there. This valve right here is made of soft material. Why? So they'll give up before the steel caliper does. Why is it made of soft material? So it'll give. No. Okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Why is it made of soft material? What's its job? To seal, right? Seal. What? For me. <laughs> <laughs> he can't do that. <laughs> All right. Oh wait. So you're saying that the type of material will help it seal? Yeah. Soft materials will conform to the material they're running into, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but since it's a soft material, we have to be careful because it will chew up easily. Yeah. yeah. That's why we use the right tools. Right size. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to talk about metric and standard? Not again, please. What's metric? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I'm playing. All right, that's a P I S T O N. Piston. Uh -huh. Piston. And this is a camera. A chamber. A chamber. And here is the brake line. Like that. Mm -hmm. Can well, we use the same master cylinder for disc brakes that we use for drum brakes? No. Nope. No. Good. It has to be much higher pressure. That is incorrect. So, well, actually it does. Okay, well, sort of. That's not the problem. <coughs> okay, right here we have a sealito lindo. Saco. <laughs> <laughs> that is called a tip. Sometimes called a dust boot. That's a seal. What does the seal do? Well, it better not have to seal much in the way of liquid. This piston is a very tight fit. What this seal does is when the piston pushes out, the seal deforms, deforms like this, and then when you take the pressure away, it pulls the piston it's back, back in. So a little bit. That would be the spring? Or yeah, that's basically what the return spring does. But as you can imagine, this can't do it for much distance, right? Uh, yeah. Right? But, yeah. yeah, it can't do it for much distance, which is why if you spin a wheel that's on a drum brake and you spin a wheel that's on a disc brake, what do you notice? The disc brake spins as you... That is incorrect. That is incorrect. That is reverse... A thousand put for you. But that doesn't, that doesn't completely come all the way back and there's still right. bobbing? Like there's still, it's still got friction to it, yeah. Now, that's going to cause a problem with gas mileage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's going to cause the problem? Oh, because it's holding it back? Okay, look, when, when, the drum, when the drum brakes retract, there's all kinds of clearance between the drum and the shoes. But when the disc brake retracts, it's still going to rub on the... Disc. Rotor. Oh, yeah. Inner. Okay. So the rotor comes like this. How do you know it's the rotor? Because it rotates. Because it's round. Yeah, because it rotates. Also, I had a question that has to do with the brake pads. And you know this is a caliper because it's shaped like a C, right? Uh huh. Go ahead. Um, I ran across a question that says if the if the brake pad will start wearing wearing and it like uh, it will grow a, a gash in it like that you could you could uh, uh how do you say like fill it up? I'll have to go back to the first one. Let me ask you this. Okay. All right, here we go. Now since the brake pads are contacting that rotor, what's gonna happen if this rotor gets wet? Corrode. Nope. Oh. Um. Nope. What's the difference between that and a windshield wiper? It's going to spray the water. Yeah, it's going to wipe the water off the disc. Now, you have to understand we've had disc brakes on airplanes since the 30s. What's the advantage of the disc brake? 
they work for, they work for the oh, wet weather. superior performance yeah. and wet weather. Absolutely. Now let's make sure you understand. If water gets inside the drum, what happens to it? Oh, starts Centrifugal force pushes it towards the outside. And then but starts, what? Then it's but it's got no place to escape. So it sits there. Which means if your drum brake gets wet, you're going to have problems because you can't get the water out. Yeah. It's going to corrupt your uh, corrupt your pads. Whereas this is going to wipe all the water off the rotor. Okay, but remember, drum brake doesn't require power brakes, which is why a power booster, which is why we went so long with drum brakes. Now, pretty much everything you buy is going to be four wheel disc, right? Mm -mm. Drum and disc. My flex is on rear disc. It's drum. Yeah. <laughs> what happens when you buy a bucket? Oh. Uh -huh. Ooh. Low blow. <laughs> Low blow. <laughs> so the point I was trying to make was. How many pistons are in the caliper? One or two, maybe. One, <coughs> one depending on what kind of caliper you have. If it's a bull, then you have two. But if it's a quad, one. and if it's a quad, it's a you quad. have four. And if you have an eight, yeah, uh, on top of it, right? You can buy a Celine with eight pistons, right? You can buy the, wow. the on one side, no SVT no, Coke. Four on one side and four on the other. The, CTSV's got eight pistons. Eight piston front. Now the problem is when talks about that five brakes. Yes, that's why. Because they are very when you have multiple pistons, they are very very eager to hang up, right? Because even if one hangs up, the other one's going to do the work. They're very very common in seizing in the cylinders. What we used to find out because the the Mustangs used to come with four piston calipers back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And what we found out is that they used to hang up one piston all the time. Now, why do we have multiple pistons in the same um, caliper? Because if your brake pad is this long, mm -hmm. you can't just put one in the middle. It'll cock. Right? Mm -hmm. So what they do is they put one piston here, one piston here, one piston here. So that you get an even application. Mm -hmm. But it costs more money. It costs you more apples. All the way around, baby. Yeah, you run that dog fly the brake fluid all the way around. And be very careful with that because you won't like replacing that caliper. Mm -mm. Okay. So that's the video there. Now we're going to inspect here. And we're also going to inspect at there at the seal, make sure that there is no leaking fluid. But we got to remember also that part of what this seal does is keeps dirt and stuff from going back in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now. Yeah. The seal. The seal is to keep the uh, brake fluid in. This actually has a seal. It looks like this. Oh, right. Yeah. It's called a boot. Yep. Yeah. What does a boot do? Keeps dust out. Keeps what's inside, inside. in. Inside. Keeps what's outside yeah, out. out. Yeah. Okay. But it's not designed to keep any actual pressure. Right. In. Right. Right. It's not actually sealing anything. It's just covering to uh, keep it from getting dirty because. You got to realize that the, the clearances here are extraordinarily small. Okay. Folks, we do not rebuild wheel cylinders, we do not rebuild calipers, and we do not rebuild master cylinders. If you want to buy a, a rebuilt one, fine. Not rebuilt down on Florence. Rebuilt by a, a major rebuilder, that's fine. In fact, I strongly suggest it because there's basically no difference between a rebuilt one and a new one. However, except the price. Yes, yeah, that's right. However, we don't rebuild these ourselves. First of all, it doesn't make any financial sense. In order to rebuild this, you got to blow the piston out, reinstall the seal, reinstall the piston. By that time, I've been I've been done for 20 minutes because I just went down and I bought the whole caliper. I took the cop, put it on. Got your buddy up in the truck to pump the brakes and blow the seal. If that, yeah. 
If that, because it will gravity bleed, just not very quickly. All right, questions, comments, thoughts on that? Yes. What? What makes one brake pad where? Okay. The fact that it touches first. My point was, look, nothing is perfectly round, yes? A circle is an abstract, a theoretical abstraction. A what? Ooh, <laughs> I'm words. That's why pi is never going to fly. What? Hey, what? <laughs> what is it? Pi. 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 You know the number? 3.3. Circle, perfect circles do not exist in nature. Anyway, the point I was trying to make was perfect circles do not exist in nature. Perfectly straight, perfectly flat does not exist in nature. As a result, we have tolerances, right? It's like you don't have to be perfectly flat, but you have to be at least this flat or round or whatever. So, as we saw, the few of you that came and watched Moses' beautiful um, lessons on cutting discs and drums, what happened? We try to cut the drum, and what happens? Shh, 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 shh. Why is it making that sound? Because it's unbalanced. That is incorrect. What do you mean? Because it was rounded. Because it was, it was an oval shape. It's not perfectly straight. And if you chuck something up, and then take it off, and then chuck it up again, it's not going to chuck up in the same place. That's just machining tolerances. So basically, this rotor, when it, the rotor is spinning, not only is it going like this, it's it also going like this. That's when the run out? Yes, exactly. This is called uh, radial run out when it's going like this, and it's called lateral run out when you're going like this. It's something we check with a dial indicator, right? Mm -hmm. Because if we have too much of this, the caliper's not going to be able to move around enough, and it's going to translate into what? Warm brake pads. Or spongy oh, brakes. No, nope. it's going to be a pulsating Pulse. pedal. Pulsating pedal. What's the number one cause of pulsating pedals? Oh, well, uh -huh. When you step on the pedal, it goes like this. Number one cause. Diantheria. Tiny. You said it's the two. What? Warp drums. Tightening the. No, it's freaking Diantherias tightening lug nuts with an impact gun. The lack of a torque wrench. How come they don't torque? Because it takes too long. <laughs> then they wouldn't be a Yantaria. Because it takes too long. Look, these things will glow orange. If you ever watch road races, these things are orange. Or in fact, they're gonna be orange uh, just on normal cars too, but you usually don't see it. The thing is, what does orange mean? Orange it's means the metal is hot. very hot. Ah. And since the metal is very hot, does that make soft. it hard or soft? Soft. Ah. Soft, exactly. So here's what happens. The reason we use a torque wrench, what is torque? I keep forgetting. Twisting so, force. Twisting 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 force. Okay. The reason we use a torque wrench is so that there's even pressure Remember. on every oh. bolt hole. What? Every lug nut. The reason we use a torque wrench is so that there's even pressure on this hub. And that even pressure translates into even pressure here. Because if it's got a tight lug nut here and a loose lug nut here, when this thing gets orange, it's going to warp yes. in that direction. Oh. So when you step on the brake, the number one cause of pedal pulsation is freaking Yanta Reyes and impact guns. Oh, OK. But, but the, the, the right way to say it would be uh, lateral run out? It causes lateral run out, right? But the, the, the pulsing would be caused by lateral run out? No. no. Yeah, the, the pedal pulsation is caused by the lateral run out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. And then when you try to yeah. turn them? Typically, if we have a lateral run out problem, we're going to just go ahead and grind the, grind the rotor, right? But oh. I mean, if it's like one of those $130 rotors, you know, or if, or if we have to take a whole hub off, that's a significant job. You want to do the lateral, you, you know, okay, here's how you do it. You would just hit off the hub? The lateral run out looks like this. You get a dial indicator, which has a plunger, and you get a dial indicator like that. It has its little stand. Uh -huh. It's got a little stand that you hook onto a vice grip or something like that. And then you spin this and you watch the needle move. I think the correct dimension is zero, zero, three, three thousandths of an inch max. 
Now, here's the thing. Back in the first day, back in the first days of this uh, back in the first days of disc brakes, we used to have what's called a fixed caliper, and a fixed caliper means that the caliper was bolted on tight. Why is it bolted on tight? This is doing it because it's stopping the car. The problem was if you had the least bit of runout, you'd get pedal pulsation. So now we have.